So very similar to the upper, you want to go around the periphery and carve away any excess wax that might be uh, on top of the land area. Go back and carve and smooth things out. Perhaps fill in any little bubbles that you may have or any air pockets that might be trapped before you remove anything. Obviously the height of the occlusal rim is much taller than I like it to be. But I think I have a lot of elements that are correct there. I have a buckle slope on either side. I have a slight little buckle curvature on either side, as I do here. You can almost see a little hint here of a buckle curvature. And I think the, for the most part, the center of the rim at the posterior section is over the crest of the ridge, the center of the rim. Unlike the upper, the lingual of the rim is over the crest of the ridge to compensate for the pattern of bone loss. So let's just see if we can pull this out. So I'm grabbing it and it's really shouldn't have any problems unless you have very severe undercuts. Gently, nothing is left on the cast. And once again, I'm going to carve the excess wax away from the periphery. Clean up my frenal attachments. And utilize my ruler and measure 18 millimeters above the labial frenum. As you recall, we didn't have any wax back here, but some of it just kind of worked its way there. So we're going to scrape that away. Inside here, there's quite a bit of an overlap over the land area. So you could carve it, but you run the risk of distorting your your rim. So I'm going to heat up my instrument and away from the tissue bearing surface or the part of the bite block that's going to contact the tissue for support. I want to make sure that the wax flows away from there so I don't get wax underneath here because it's going to alter the fit of the bite block. A little bit too big to go in here, so I'll continue with the number seven spatula. But just enough, because I still want to fill in all of the vestibule to maximize stability and retention. I carve that away. Be aware where you're anchoring your hands for support so you don't distort your occlusal rim. And again, you want to smooth things out as much as you can before introducing your alcohol torch to smooth it even further. A little bit in here. And finally, I'm going to open up the phenol attachments. And again, look at the angle and follow that. Start it off with your surgical blade and then perhaps you can use your font stock or you can use your 6A knife or your 7A. But I think you'll have an easier time with either the font stock or the 6A as well. So I'm gonna make a little, little slot in here. Open that up. And go back. And really taper it, 
feather it, round it off inside and out so it feels smooth to the touch and certainly in the patient's mouth. And one more here. Now we're getting really close to finalizing this lower bite block. Before you adjust the width of the bite block, make sure you adjust the height. So I'm gonna bring my master cast back here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to outline my Richard Molar pads. And one on the side. And I'm gonna make a marking halfway up the Richard Molar pad and extend that marking all the way to the land area. Same thing on the other side. Now just make sure you're parallel when you do that, okay? If you have a hard time doing that, you can use the desktop to do that. So if I do halfway here, if you have a hard time imagining where this line goes, just get your angle as well. So there's an imaginary line to join the two richer molar pads. And we want to make sure that you extend that line in the same angle, that you don't veer up or down. So we have a line like that. Okay. So I'm going to reorient the lower bite block back onto the master cast. Everything should fit there nicely, no rocking. And now I can take my ruler and measure 18 millimeters from the top of the land area over the frenal attachment and just make a little mark here. That's 18 millimeters. Then I'm gonna start at the marking back here and hit and go towards that target. So I'm going to start here and keep rotating my model until I hit the other target back here. And as you can see that this plane of occlusion that I've created here is parallel to the base. This is parallel to the base in terms of a left to right position. And again, it's parallel to the base, anteriorly, posteriorly, on the right side. I know this is parallel to the base, so if I melt this correctly, when I put these two rims opposing each other tentatively, the base of, the, of both casts should be parallel to each other. Now, this is a bit, little bit more difficult than the upper because you're gonna have wax flowing all over the place and it's gonna create a mess in here that you already cleaned up. So over the years, I've created a little technique for myself. So what I do, instead of putting the rim as it fits, I'm gonna put it on backwards. But before I do so, I create a little opening, almost like a little channel where the excess wax is gonna flow away from the bite block just before my line. Maybe a millimeter or half a millimeter before my line. So now when I heat up my rim former, I'm not gonna place it as I did on the upper. I'm gonna go the opposite way. 
and all that excess, excess wax that you see there is just going to flow away onto the paper. Let's see if it works again. So you might want to tilt your bite block in a way that you can see the rim former being parallel to the line that you've scribed on the wax. And as you get closer and closer, use a little bit less heat with your rim former. As I'm looking at it here, I can see that on the front left side, I think I need to put a little more pressure there to be closer to that line. I'm getting there. And I have a little bit of wax that flows down the lingual, but I can simply clean that up very easily. I didn't make a mess of it again. I can clean that up. Now, I think that's as far as I would like to go in terms of the height, maybe just a, a quick once over here. That's good. And this being a class one job relationship, uh, relationship scenario, if I hold it tentatively together, you notice how the bite blocks are pretty much in line with each other. The bases of the bite blocks are pretty much parallel to each other. And there's a slight little overlap of the upper occlusal rim over the lower occlusal rim, just like we have natural teeth. Upper teeth overlap lower teeth a little bit. And there's a slight little overlap due to the labial inclination of the interior portion of the maxillary rim versus the lower being pretty much straight up and down. That would be ideal. Not to say this is the, what we're gonna have in the patient's mouth, but this is a good starting point. So from here on, I want to make sure that I'm at the right width for this bite block. There's no point of having it pr proper arch form and the right height, but then we have to consider the width. So in terms of the width, as I mentioned before, we need to have about 10 millimeters. I got 12 right now around the first, second molar area and closer to six around the canine and closer to four at the midline. Obviously, this is <clears throat> a little bit wider than it should be. Where do I carve, though, to make it a little more narrow? Do I carve on the facial aspect of the rim, or do I carve on the lingual? Well, I have my line here that indicates the crest of the ridge. So what I'm going to do I'm just going to make a little line, little imprint there and there to where I think the ridge should be on the inside. So I'm going to carve so I have equal distance on both sides of that line. And I think over time you'll start to realize what is 10 millimeters, what is 8, and you won't really have to use a ruler in good time. I'm going to carve a little bit more on the lingual here to get this interior portion of the rim closer to four millimeters here because it's closer to eight now and maybe take off a little bit here to make it a little more symmetrical it looks like it's getting away from me here a little bit
I can take it off the model. With very quick and light pressure, just go over it. Might have to go back and add that wax back on there. I don't want that roughness to show through and I don't want the patient to feel it. So just the final carving now. And I'm gonna use this as a guide to go back and finish the width for the upper. As I tentatively hold them together to create that overlap, that horizontal overlap. Okay, put this back on the master cast. A little wax residue left behind. So that fits on there nicely. And as far as this is concerned, it looks like it's pretty good as far as the width. I'm closer to 11 here. And I know this is over the crest of the ridge, so I'm gonna reduce a little bit on the outside. Which doesn't take very much to get it down to 10, just a millimeter. So that was very minimal adjustment there. And again, I can take it off the cast. And carve a little more freely now to create that smooth surface before I finalize with my alcohol torch. Keep in mind for now, and we'll explain it a little more in detail uh, in later videos, that the edges of the rim need to be sharp. You can't have a dull, rounded look to the edge of the rim, whether it's the upper or the lower. So I'm doing the best that I can to maintain the edges of the rim nice and sharp. Okay, so now I can take both of these off the models. I'm just going to blow away some of the excess wax debris off them. And now I can bring my alcohol torch and with gentle pressure, I'm going to gently flame the edge of the periphery has to have the edge of the periphery somewhat mimic that. It's smooth to the touch. It's not going to harm the patient. And you're building confidence with your clients. Before I put it on, I'm also going to flame. Let me just peel that away the periphery a little bit on the outside as well, right here. Because I won't be able to get to this part because the land area is gonna be in the way. So 
everything is nice and smooth. Now when I place this back onto the cast, it should fill in the land area completely with no voids. It's completely filled in. The free and all attachments are relieved with wax. And I'm gonna hold it and smooth out all the surfaces with the exception of the rim edges. So I'm gonna let that cool off, hold it into position, and now I'll do the same thing on the outside. Now because I took time to carve this fairly smooth, I don't have to use a lot of heat here to get it really smooth. I'll set that aside and continue on the lower. And again, I'll finish a little bit of the periphery that fits inside the land area. Otherwise, you won't be able to do it once you put it on the cast. But you don't want to finish smoothing out the wax with your alcohol off the cast completely because you could end up distorting things. So I'll put, put it back on the cast. And finish that off. And by the time we do just a summary of these bite blocks, I'm gonna correct this off camera. There's a couple of spots here that I need to correct. Let that cool off and I'll move on the outside. So that's the basic uh, fabrication of complete upper and lower bite blocks or upper and lower uh, base plates of the occlusal rims f in order to achieve the bite registration or to go through your maxillomandibular relations with your clients at the next appointment.